Awkward as it may be, talking about sex with your kids is vital. And so is continuing that conversation into their teenage years. Heather Beer from the Valley Christian Counseling Center joins us today with some great tips on how to tackle the sometimes tough and can be awkward conversation. Mm -hmm. One of the things I love that you said that you talked to us about with your notes is set the bar high. What yeah. do you mean specifically? Well, if you think of the an analogy of, you know, a high a high jumper, you know, they want to get as high as they can. And so you set the bar as high as you can and they're gonna aim for that. They're gonna shoot for as high a score as possible. And so it's okay to really set the bar high for our kids. It's okay to ask them to wait until marriage or to, you know, whatever the value of the family family is. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Because if we're if we set it low, then the kids are like what There's nothing to shoot for. This. How do you sort of deflate what goes on in society? Because I hear a lot of people when I have that conversation with absence, like, what are you kidding me? That's not realistic. You know, um, it's realistic if the parents believe it and if they support their kid, if they talk about it, and if the relationship's there. It's a very realistic thing. And, and the thing is, um, you know, what you want to do, I guess, is um, really talk about their their lifespan talk about the you know okay maybe they're 13 or 14 and you're you're really getting into the kind of the heavy nitty gritty of the of the conversation mm -hmm. but you know that they're probably not going to get married until they're 25 26 27 because that's our national average yeah. um, for age at marriage and so what I think is a is probably one of the best things that parents can do is talk about what are the things that you want to accomplish between now and the time you get married and on past that you know like once you get married a house and a, the nice cars or whatever and and the dog and you know vacations and whatnot um, but um, keeping their eyes on the goal is absolutely important because when when the goal isn't in sight everything gets messy and so when 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 teens are focused I mean our teens they're achievers. Yes. These days, they are high, high achievers, and so they want to they want to please people. Which, I mean, that's not you know the goal of things that we want them to value these things but for they themselves. Want to please but you too. they yeah. do, they do, and that relationship there is the most important thing. So what I do is take a piece of paper, mm -hmm. draw out a timeline, and say, okay, so you're 14 now. The next big thing is going to be, say, um, an all-star basketball thing in high school. Maybe that's the first goal. And then it's graduating from high school. And then maybe it's getting a scholarship to college. And then, you know, maybe graduating from college and getting that job. And so what are the things that you need to do and to focus on in order to have those things happen? You know, the, the number one indicator for poverty in our nation is teen childbearing. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about just the, the ramifications of that and how that can affect, it not only affects the mother's life, but the child's life and possibly the father's life as well for the rest of their life, mm -hmm. very, very likely. Um, keeping their eye on what, what the goal is, what the prize is, you know, if it's that marriage, if it's that family, you know, someday the house and the picket fence and whatever, you know, that's the important part. And so parents need to be involved in their kids' lives in terms of guiding them. And, and the reason that the kids need the guidance, and, and I mentioned this in my, in my notes too, is that um, their brains aren't fully developed until they're in their mid-20s. And so it's specifically the, the part of the brain called the prefrontal cortex, and that's located right in the front mm -hmm. of, their, of their brains. And it's the part that projects into the future and sees, okay, if I drink this alcohol and drive, this might happen to me. Or if I choose to have sex with my girlfriend, mm -hmm. this might happen to me. It's just not fully developed. And part of the reason, I believe, is that we've kind of lost the, the mentoring relationships that used to take place between adults and, and teens. You know, it used to be that, you know, if the lawnmower broke, say, um, it would be dad and son tr figuring out fixing it together. Well, now people are so busy and lawnmowers are so inexpensive, you, you know, what's the point of trying to fix it yeah. together? You just go buy a new one. And then you've lost that really critical point of connecting. Or say your, your daughter needs to take, a, you know, two dozen cookies to school. Well, in, instead of, you know, the cup of flour, cup of sugar, cup of chips, you know, and, and doing it together, then, you know, you just go to the store and, and pick Bye. something up at Hornbacher's <laughs> yeah. or whatever, you know, and you've really lost that time to connect. And so that's one of the reasons I feel that teens' brains are taking longer to fully develop um, uh, until they're saying even late, late 20s. So much more on the sex talk when we come back with Heather Beer.